you guys are joining me from Lady Gaming. This video, I have another Battlefield 5 discussion with Cheesy Gaming and Saplasco. Sorry, I pronounced his name wrong last time. If you want to see the full video, don't forget to go and check out their channel's link below in the description because I cut this a little bit in my own way. But if you want to see the full video or the parts that I cut out, don't forget to go and check out their channels and subscribe to them because I really appreciate them helping me out with this. But yeah, we're talking about future versus past for Battlefield 5. Sit back, relax, enjoy the gameplay and the discussion. But let's get right into the video. Okay, yeah, so the advantages of the past really are just that it gets, obviously it's what the majority of people want to start off. Um, when Jack Frags did a poll asking what um, setting we wanted to see, 53% of the people vote for World War II, but obviously the past could also be Vietnam, the Korean War, or World War I. Mm -hmm. But I think what most people want from the past is that most games when they go to the future, they introduce a lot of things that manipulate the basic gunfights a lot. So like that includes boost jumps, lock-on weapons, and stuff like that that sort of gets rid of the core gunplay that most people like. And I think people think that if we went back to a past setting, we would get back just that flat gunplay that most Simple. people... Yeah, that brought most people into the franchise, whether it's either COD or Battlefield, um, because a lot of people got mad that COD keeps going into the future. But yeah, I think that's really one of the main advantages of the past. Well, looking at the poll from Jack Frags, it's not like it's a small difference of like a win here. It's like World War II won by a bunch, like a whole lot. So, yep. I mean, like just just looking at it. We would, if they wanted to play it safe, we would just see a modern warfare, but just seeing that with the Final Stand DLC would be like, you know, kind of like sci-fi 2143 kind of style, it's either we're going to see, I think, leading to a future or a near future kind of setting here to be with all the, um, you know, supposedly leaks coming out, but I think that's my opinion that's going near the future or sci-fi, but World War Two is still an option just because of how popular the vote is. Yeah, and you know, sixty-six thousand people voted in this, so it's not like it's not like a few people really like I want World War Two or past, but like a lot of people, over fifty percent of sixty-six thousand voted for World War Two or or past, I guess. Well, I was looking at how many players were on like playing Battlefield today, and it's like a lot. It's like over a hundred thousand people, and that's like. That's over half of the people right now playing Battlefield. So over half of the people playing Battlefield voted basically in this. So, I mean, there's advantages of both sides. I mean, obviously the community wants past. But to be completely honest, EA wants more money than anything. So they've obviously looked into this a lot. But they're probably just going to make a decision based on what they think will bring in new or more new players rather than what the community actually wants. Okay, well, well, uh, yeah. well, I mean, first I wanted, to, yeah. I wanted to say, like, with the thing, like, them competing with Call of Duty and stuff, I mean, they might want to do a whole other thing with, like, if they're going in the past, that might just lead the whole vote for them getting, like, the most sales, just because of how big of, you know, how more negative um, future games are coming nowadays with Call of Duty, so they might want to try to attract the audience that wants to go back to that time period. And try to get yeah. those sales and win the win the sale vote of uh, you know beating Call of Duty like how they always try to. Yeah. But uh, speaking of new fans, I think very few games have been set in the past recently, besides games like uh, I believe Days of War and Battalion. So they are going to be, uh, a past Battlefield will be unique, especially if they tackle a war that hasn't really been brought into video games that much. Um, I don't know, maybe even the Cold War or something, even though that wasn't really a war war. But I think that being unique will help bring in some new players. And Battlefield Hardline, I think, brought in some new players. Yeah. It, it, it at least reinforced my interest in Battlefield. It's, like, kind of new and unique. And so it's I tried it out, and I enjoyed it. But uh, basically... By making it so unique, I have a feeling they'll they will bring in new fans, or if they just stick to something safe, kind of like maybe World War Two or something, then I think they then like what am I trying to say here? I have a feeling that 
they're going to try and keep it safe and bring in old, the old players that they lost in Battlefield Hardline rather than go for something really flashy like Far in the Future or Far in the Past. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, one, if they either play it safe by going with something that they're obviously good at with modern military, while they probably still bring back the majority of the community, um, they have a less chance of being really successful. Because, like both of you said, a lot of, like, just people in the FPS community haven't had, like, a giant um, AAA developer create a World War II shooter in a long time. And I feel that not just the Battlefield and Call of Duty fans, but if they went back to World War II, it would bring back a lot more fans. But I think now we should just talk about the advantages of futures um, gameplay-wise, not just sales-wise and community-wise. So if any of you want to start talking about that. Well, well, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You can, okay, well, all right, so, like, the future advantages would probably be maybe, not, I'm not saying, it's kind of hard to word this, not better DLC, but maybe, maybe more, um, maybe more, I don't know, diverse, maybe the word yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in DLC themes, but I, I can see, I can still see, um, like, a World War Two setting DLC being really cool, because of, you know, how all the, um, you know, you know, just learning stuff about like in social studies or stuff like that. You can always guess what kind of DLC they can go for, but literally with uh, a future thing, they can make up whatever they want. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of the same with weapons as well, because obviously with World War II we have like set weapons. I mean, it's set in the past, so there's only a certain amount of weapons they can bring into the game, and. That also goes into what you said with DLC, is that a lot Battlefield fans a lot of the time like it when they bring back um, weapons from old games, uh, just because they like to have the nostalgic feeling of using weapons from old games. And with World War II, that wouldn't really be possible, because obviously you can't just take a modern like Ace-23, for example, and bring it back into World War II. Whereas if they went into the future, they could bring back a weapon from World War II all the way through to Battlefield 4. But... On the other hand, like, in the past, they just have a set amount of weapons and they can't do anything crazy and make, like, for example, laser guns is something that would just sort of make Battlefield a bit gimmicky if they put that into the future. Whereas in the past, it just has a set amount of weapons that, I mean, have relatively different roles and fill their own role rather than just a ton of weapons that where a lot of them just do the same thing. Well, um, as you said, like, laser weapons and stuff, I, when you, like, because there's a really big difference between the way that a game could be in the past and in the future, like, it can be really unrealistic if it's set in the future, and it, even if they try to make it realistic, it still might be really hard, because some, like, Call of Duty's barely realistic at all, however, some people say that, like, going into the future completely ruined Call of Duty, and I don't want Battlefield to make the same mistake. And so Battlefield's always kind of been known to be realistic and at least semi-tactical. It's still fun and stuff, but I have a feeling if they went into the future, it would be way too different and way too hard to be like Battlefield if it's set in the future. At least that's my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe down below for much more content on everything Battlefield 5. Tell me what you guys want to see next. I'm probably doing a collaboration with Dangerous Moose talking about the class balance in Battlefield 5, which is something that came up. Danny on PC did a video on it because I actually sent him a message in this group chat and asking for feedback about a Battlefield 5 class balance thing and he ended up going and making a video on it which is kind of fine but also kind of annoying but again don't forget to subscribe down below drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it but that's what if you guys thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time